Instructomania presents the geography of China. This video will detail geographical features of ancient China, how geography shaped the lives of ancient Chinese, who lived in ancient China. The word geography through a historian's lens means the physical environment and how it may influence an economy and culture. Some examples may include scorching deserts that encouraged nomads to move between water sources, islands where the surrounding ocean offered a food source, flooding rivers that created fertile farmland, and mountains where a resource like timber was used for building. Section 1. Geographical Features of Ancient China China is the third largest country in the world, and it has every type of climate on Earth, from subarctic to tropical. China borders 14 other countries, including India to the southwest beyond the Himalayan mountains. The Himalayan mountains house the tallest peak in the world, Mount Everest. The first measurement of Mount Everest was taken in 1852 and put the peak at 29,002 feet. However, the most recent measurement clocked in at 29,029 feet. That means the massive peak has jumped 27 feet. The tectonic plates underneath the mountain account for the changes in height. The Tibet Plateau nestles between the Himalayan Mountains and the Kunlun Mountains in West China and makes up about one-fourth of China's land. The average height of the Tibet Plateau is 14,000 feet above sea level, making it the tallest plateau in the world. The Taklimakan Desert of northwest China is a cold desert climate, plunging as low as negative 4 degrees in winter. Its name is commonly translated as, once you get in, you'll never get out. The Mongolian Plateau dips into China along two parts of the border between the two countries. This massive plateau measures 1,200,000 square miles. The Gobi Desert sits on the southern part of the Mongolian Plateau. During ancient times through the Middle Ages, there were several major stops on the Silk Road for weary travelers and merchants traversing the Gobi Desert. Most of China's agriculture happens between two major rivers that run out of the Tibet Plateau and into the North China Plain. The Wanghe, or Yellow River, runs 2,900 miles and splits. Its name comes from the color of the silt that builds each year when it floods. The Yangtze River is south of the Yellow River and is the third longest river in the world. Both major rivers of China flow east, emptying into the Yellow Sea. Beyond the peninsula of Korea, the Japanese Sea joins with the Yellow Sea, offering the eastern shores of China diverse food, such as fish and crustaceans. Test your knowledge. Let's play Where's the Chicken? In this game, you will track the chicken as it appears on a blank map of China. Once the music stops, you will use a China map labeled with physical features to determine where the chicken ended up. Other animals may appear on the map, so don't forget to keep your eyes on the chicken. So where did the chicken end up? Was it the Himalayan mountains, the Tibet Plateau, or the Yellow Sea? That's right, it was the Tibet Plateau. Let's try it again. Remember to keep your eyes on the chicken. So where did the chicken end up? Was it the Kunlun Mountains, the Mongolian Plateau, or the Gobi Desert? Yep, it was the Gobi Desert. Let's try one last time. You got this. <laughs> so 
So where did the chicken end up? Was it the Taklimakan Desert, the Yangtze River, or the Japanese Sea? Nice job! It was the Japanese Sea. We all know that rice is in Chinese food, but millet was also a very common grain grown and eaten in North China. How does geography shape lives? For the ancient Chinese, the rivers provided everything they needed to adapt and live as farmers. In addition to the rich soil from annual flooding, the rivers provided fish to eat and hemp to make clothing. Villages held around 100 families, each with a small farm. The first Chinese cities had high walls of hard-packed dirt and gates that stayed shut at night to protect its citizens. The Chinese needed to travel, supply food to soldiers guarding the northern Mongolian border, and to communicate more quickly across China. These needs triggered the building of waterways throughout the country. While the Grand Canal connecting northern and southern China is well known, smaller canals, such as the Han Go Canal, were built as early as 480 BC. That's almost 1,000 years before the Grand Canal was completed by the Sui Dynasty. Fun fact, in addition to oxen, the Chinese also attached plows to dogs and trained them to help with the farm work. Who lived in ancient China? Archaeology points toward the earliest Chinese migrating to the Yellow River Valley from the north or northeast region of China or Mongolia. Their legends stake that mythical emperors taught the Chinese how to make fire, farm, and build houses. As a surplus of food increased, so did the population. Powerful families conquered weaker ones and became dynasties that filled China's history. Chinese dynasties gained control and created strict government and law. The Shang Dynasty started silk culture and ruled with a monarchy. Bronze weapons and jade art were created as well as a writing system. Spiritual communication was given to a diviner, often paid by the emperor. The Zhou Dynasty moved China to a feudal system where nobles paid professional warriors to protect and swear loyalty. Many localized battles among nobles destroyed and reduced China's population. The Qin Dynasty rose up among noble wars and overtook government. The First Empire was created in the north and trade was improved with standard weights and currency. Also, iron weapons and horse-pulled chariots for the army were introduced. They built the Great Wall to defend against Mongolians. Lastly, the Han Dynasty ruled, spanning over four centuries. The Han period is considered a golden age in Chinese history. Science and technology during the Han period saw significant advances, including the process of papermaking, the nautical steering ship rudder, and a seismometer for measuring earthquakes. Let's check out what it really looks like in China today. As you can see, the physical environment of ancient China greatly influenced the economy and culture of the people who lived there. Consider this. In what ways does the physical environment influence your life? Be prepared to support your answer with examples. From two teachers to all of you amazing teachers out there, we would like to thank you for choosing our resources to use in your classroom. Find more Instructomania teaching materials and lessons at our Instructomania store and on our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for your support.